When you first open TechSoft Designer, this is what you see. Um, before we talk about the, the menus, I just want to make sure that we've got the page set up right. So you need to go into Setup, Drawing, Layout, and from here you need to check that you've got A3 set and landscape set because this is what we're going to be working in. We're going to be working with A3 landscape pages. If you haven't got them set, you just change them in these drop down lists. Okay, so this is our A3 page. This is our working area, and we can zoom in and we can zoom out of that if we want to look in, get things more close up, and we'll make more use of that later on. But basically, we've got um, some information in four different locations. At the very bottom down here where it says absolute relative and distance, if you notice as I move my cursor around the screen, all that information there changes. Now later on that will be useful to you because it tells you how long a line is or where its starting point is. So it works in dimensions and these ones are set to millimeters. There's also in the thing where it says select a tool, okay, as I hover over here it says gives helpful prompts. Sometimes when you use tools it tells you down here what to do. So if there's a particular place you need to click to make something happen, it tells you there. Okay, along the top here, this is the kind of menu you're more used to of things like um, Microsoft products, but you've got your drop-down lists, and you've also got your smart icons, which do various things. And probably for you, the ones you're going to be using the most are these ones here to do with line colors and fill colors. So when we start drawing lines and drawing objects, we can change here the types of lines, the colors of them, and so on. On the left-hand side, these are mostly our drawing tools. and. Um, any of these, if you hover over them, it tells you what they are, so path, shapes, and so on. But what's more important is if you hold down your left mouse button over them, it draws out a whole range of sub-menus. So these are all the different ways that you can draw lines. Um, if I go on to shapes, these are the different shapes available to me, and so on. So you need to be aware of that as you go along with your projects. Um, you can see whichever one is goes to dark grey is the one that's currently selected. Um, the third cell, the last set of, of menu icons, are these ones over here on the right hand side. And they're mainly to do with using things like grids. Now you can see there's a grid on there at the moment. Um, grid lock basically means that I can only draw where the points are. So what I will do is I'll show you how to use the um, drawing tool first of all. So I'm going to click over here on the, just on the basic one, the first one. And you can see at the moment, if I zoom in a little bit so you can see those squares a bit more clearly. I can go with my cursor anywhere in between these dots. If I turn grid lock on, I can now lock to those dots. And if I switch on step lock, then I've got a series of smaller steps in between each of those dots that I can lock to. We'll leave step lock off for now. If I want to just draw a basic line with my grid lock on, I can click where I want to start the line, and I can go down to another position and click a second time, and that's my line. Now once my line is uh, selected by using the selection tool, I can do other things to it. So here's my line. If I want to make my line um, thicker, I can choose this. I can choose how many millimeters thick and so on. And there's my line thickness. If I select it again, this time I might want to change the color of my line. So I can come up here and choose the color of the line. Again, I click off it to see it. The other option is the line style. So I can change this and I've got various options. But if I wanted a dotted line, I can choose here and so on. Now you'll see when I select an item there's various things I can do with it. I've got options here. So if I click on this copy one it makes a duplicate. If I grab the middle section I can move it. If I just click on it and press my delete button it goes away again. If I reselect this one the other options I've got are to do with flicking it so I can change the um, vertical or the horizontal direction of these things or I can grab the rotation and I can rotate them. So I can do lots of things with my objects once I've got them. I'm just going to delete this one out of the way for the moment. Before I go any further, I'm just going to save my work. So the same as normal, you go to File, choose Save As, and you need to give it a suitable name. So I'm just going to put mine on my desktop for now, and I'm going to call this one Basic Shapes. And now that I know my work is saved, just change the name at the top here. So obviously all I need to do is as I add extra things in. Every now and again I need to click up here on the grayed out save button to make sure I'm saving my updated work. Okay, we'll have a look at some shapes. So if I choose my shapes option here, and I'm just going to go for the first one which is just drawing rectangles. And if I drag downwards, and you can see it begins to pull the shape out. I'll try and get a square. There's a square. Now at the moment that's got a very thin line around it, and there's no color in the middle of it. So 
there are options of things I can change afterwards if I choose to. So if I go back and I select my object, I decide that my line needs to be thicker. I'll make it a thick line around it. And I want to fill it with some color. So I'm going to go for this um, fill over here and I'm going to choose a solid fill. Now you'll notice there's different sorts of fills that you could choose from. Hatching fills put lines in. Graduation is the same as a gradient fill. You can add textures in and there's a whole bunch of those to choose from. Um, and you can put patterns in. Again, again, you can load different ones in. But we're interested in a solid color for the moment. And I'm going to make this maybe uh, red. So I'll choose red as my color. And I'm going to click OK to apply it. So now, here's my object. I've got a filled shape. But what I might want to do is I might want to actually duplicate this shape. And I'm going to actually pull that out of the way. And on my duplicated version, I'm going to change something about it. So I'm going to go for my, my color fill again. And I'm going to choose a different color. So I'll have a blue. And click OK. Here's my second shape. I want to make that one a bit smaller. So I'm going to hold down shift while I do this. I'm just going to drag a smaller square out. Now I've still got grid lock on at the moment. So depending upon what my shape is, sometimes it's easy to actually locate one in front of the other. And you'll see that this one now, in terms of what's called stacking order, this shape's in front of the red one. If I switched it over, in fact, if I move this to the side so you can understand that, I'm going to actually say to this one, I'm going to bring this one to the front. So I'm going to edit it and I'm going to arrange and I'm going to say bring to the front. So now my red square is in front of my blue square. So these are stacking orders and the more objects you've got, the more you've got to be aware of which one is at the back and which one's at the front. If you wanted to locate something that was a, an irregular shape, maybe if we uh, take the grid lock off and we'll rotate this or something. Now this shape here, I'll bring it to the front first of all. So I'll, I'll arrange this one and bring it to the front. I've, I've now turned my grid lock off. It means I can free rotate. I can free move it anywhere I want. So I can position that. If I'm not happy or I want it to make it a bit more accurate, I can zoom in a bit closer and have a little look at it. And what I can even do is if I choose to go a little bit closer again, is I can click here on that middle um, yellow square. And if I use my arrow keys now, I can shift things ever so slightly and each time I press then enter it fixes that position so I go up and left a bit and press enter it fixes that position for me so I've got options there to be quite accurate using either the zoom or using the nudging the arrow keys and if I come back out you can see this is the actual size I've been working on it's actually quite a small drawing but I've been working on it in a fixed space if I shift click so I've clicked on my first shape I'm holding down shift click my second shape now I've grabbed the two of them together and I can move the whole thing around. Um, something else that might be useful is using text. Now text on here is the ABC icon which on, on lots of things is the spell checker. It actually means text on here. So I'm going to click on ABC and I'm going to click somewhere where I want to put my text. I get a little text entry box pops up and I can just add something in here whatever I want to call um, my, my work and I can click into settings and within settings I can do, make lots of choices. I can choose how big the font's going to be, so I'm going to make this one about 12 instead. I can choose different fonts and different colors and all the rest of it if I want to. At the moment I'll just settle for that and say OK and say OK again. And here's my word squares. If I decide it's not where I want it, I can click on it, grab the middle and reposition it. And again at any point I can zoom in and I can edit that if I need to make it more inf uh, interesting. If I decided I spelt something wrong or did something wrong, I can select it and down the bottom right here I always get this property box coming up. Clicking on properties brings me back to this same starting point. So what I might want to do is I might want to duplicate things. So if I wanted to make a second version, maybe this one's going to be called something else. I can go in and I can edit it and it will keep the settings that I've chosen. Oops. So when I've got my um, my set font size and font color, I, all I've got to do is duplicate it and I can reposition things where I need to put them. Okay, I mentioned texture fills earlier, we'll have a quick look at that. So if I go, I'll choose a different shape now, maybe I'll go for um, a polygon or something. Um, six sides is fine. I'm going to draw my polygon out. There's my polygon. Um, again, I'm going to reposition that because I don't like where it is particularly. I'm going to make the line a bit thicker. But this time I'm going to fill it with a texture. So again, I'm going to choose my object. And you'll see that I can only click on the line. I can't click in there because there's nothing else there at the moment. Click on the line to select it. This time I'm going to go for fill, but I'm going to choose 
a texture fill. Now within texture I can load textures and there's a whole bunch of them to choose from. Um, all you do is need to have a look through. We'll have a look at a wooden one maybe. So if I wanted to make it look like a wooden board I can click open and say OK and that will fill that texture. So you can see that would be really useful for doing design work if you were designing buildings or um, tables or something you want to put a wood effect in you can do that. Um, you can still rotate and you can do all the other things that we did with these other objects before. Remembering I'm still at the moment not using my grid lock and usually grid lock is good for when you're constructing things that are fairly simple shapes so when you want to start making more complex shapes and moving them around you probably want to turn the grid lock off in order that you can position things and move them and again what I would do is if I wanted to make these more accurate I would zoom in to actually see where the join of those things are to make the actual gap go away and make them line up more nicely okay so we've looked at texture fills, uh, gradient fills are very similar so if we look at this one here and we'll do a different sort of fill on it we'll choose the fill style this time I'll go for a, a graduated or gradient and I can choose the colors here so if I don't want a, a black there I can just go and choose a different color I'll add another one in instead of white maybe I'll go for green or something and I can move these handles around this affects the gradient you can see the preview going on up the top here and there's different sorts of gradients depending upon what you want it to look like lots of other things and choices you can make but when you're happy with the one you just hit OK and that places that gradient into your shape okay so we looked at basic text so we'll have a look at something slightly more fancy now I'm just going to zoom out for a moment get a fresh bit of space to work on and I'm going to go back into this word that I've already um, typed up I'm going to change that slightly now. So I'm going to go back into the property of it. This time I'm going to go into settings. Uh, I'm going to make it a bit bigger to start with. Maybe make it 20. And I'm going to now I'm going to add some drop shadows to it and change some colours. So maybe I'll make the um, the text a kind of blue colour, and I'll make the fill of it maybe the same as well. And you can see here there's different ways of putting the drop shadow on, whichever direction you want the shadow to show in, and the colour of the shadow percentage of it and so on but we'll just leave that with the defaults for now and have a look at it so there you can see that that's put the shadow on the text now I can make the text bigger and do things with it as I would normally so I don't have to just work in the properties to edit it I can drag and drop edit as well okay something I haven't mentioned yet is actually editing items so when you click on an item you can hit the start edit you see that you get these orange points so if I want to actually physically change the shape of this by um, grabbing the anchor points I can do that and move them around I can position them anywhere I want in order to gain the shape that I want to do and this applies to all sorts of shapes if I perhaps I want to make a curved line uh, I'm gonna drag some points out here I'm just clicking as I'm going to make a kind of very random shape when I'm as far as I want to go I press the right mouse button now that's a little bit hard to see because it's a bit on the skinny side so we'll make this line a bit thicker so it stands out but with this shape now if I decided the curves are not quite right again if I go into the star edit you see it puts these positions on so the orange positions if I zoom in a little bit so you can see those a bit more clearly the orange position is the anchor point of where the actual part of the curve is and the yellow one is the sort of anchor um, lever so we can just kind of change the the curvature rather than just moving the point so you can use the combination of both of those things to make the kind of shapes that you might want to do and when you're happy with it, the change shape you just end the edit okay the last thing we'll look at is um, slightly more complicated curved lines so I'm going to zoom and find some fresh space to start with so I've used quite a lot of this page up I'm going to go down by here somewhere so we've got a bit of area to work with now what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to bring in a picture. So I'm going to import a file, and I've got one on my desktop. Okay, here's the shape that I want to use, in, an infinity symbol. I'm going to bring that one in. I'm just going to go with the default settings for now and say OK. And it's positioned that shape there for me. Now you remember I can have different layers of things. So what I might want to do is actually use this to trace over the shape. So I'm going to choose this time instead of an open path I'm going to go for a closed path this means that the shape will end up 
closing on itself when I finish. So I'm going to try now, I might even make my line thicker before I even start so I can see it a bit better. I'm going to try and pretty much go along this shape. Now I can click as often as I choose to and that will give me the curves and obviously I can go in and I can edit the anchor points afterwards to try and make this more accurate. The advantage of having closed shapes is that you can color fill them. If you have open shapes you can't do that. So when I get towards the end I'm going to click the right mouse button and it sail seals that up. Now that doesn't look very tidy to me at the moment, it doesn't look very good but what we can do is I can get rid of the shape underneath so I'm going to move this one out of the way delete this one for the time being and I'm going to bring this one back into view now I can zoom in on this one and on any of those points that I want to smooth out all I need to do is to go into the start editing mode and I can start moving some of these things around to actually make that shape look more attractive if I've got things that are too um, too flat I can put a bit of curvature in them and so on in very much the same way that I showed you in the last uh, little clip so here now if I wanted to fill it with color I've selected it I can just go for a fill color I've got all my different options I'll just go for a solid color for the moment and fill that in and see what it looks like and there we go because it's a closed shape I can still go back and edit these points this obviously the left hand side still looks pretty hideous and I could go in and edit that but I'm not going to at the moment